Well, Ryan, after such a brilliant start to the tournament, where has it all gone wrong for Scotland? Well, the line-out, I think, was what killed Scotland at the weekend. Yeah, I, he I think... He started so well. He was, well, he was my what? man of the match, first game against England, impeccable. Well, Ryan, yeah. I personally think that Scotland are in desperate need of a line-out back row. Oh, oh, Christina. Do you, do you know anyone? I know a bloke. <laughs> I know a bloke that's playing bloody well at Glasgow at the moment. Um, oh, listen, yeah, you cannot function at international rugby if your line out doesn't, doesn't doesn't go well and I think it was something like six out of the first eight line out Scotland didn't win and it's to be fair it's not all down to George Turner like you know this deals more than anyone if people blame the hooker a lot like there's so many moving parts in that line out and yeah you don't get to see Finn Russell do what he wants to do off of off of the line out I mean it's not even the first phase it's it's the phase after that they take him wide and it's what Finn does after that second and third phase where he starts to cut people open and he just wasn't able to do that because the set piece didn't function at all. So Mate, uh, I heard I heard Ireland were, were calling attacking lineouts off Scotland ball. <laughs> what are you gonna say they knew their cause? <laughs> but, hey, oh no, it wasn't yeah, it wasn't a great day for them. So it's a tough one to take because you know they weren't far off. And if that had gone well, it would have been a very, very different story. So yeah, frustration. Like I said earlier, I think both teams will be frustrated with how they played. But Scotland even more so. I mean, you saw Johnny Sexton after. He, he wasn't happy with how they played. They didn't play particularly good rugby, did they? So, yeah, annoying. But what about the debate around the starting line seven? So I reckon back he's going Tipperick anyway. Oh, go on, Neil. Who would you who would you back at for the starting line seven? Well, I mean, I would um, pick Tipperick because that Lions is a different entity. I think you can. You're going to have a, a, a solid platform to play off. Um, and then it's about ability and support lines. And, and sort of not playing the safe way. I think with the lines, you've got to uh, sort of gamble a bit. And I think he's sort of tack minded. So I'd always veer that in that direction. I mean, Hamish Watson, when I was up at Edinburgh coaching for a year, a while ago now, um, he was just coming through and like, Tremendous talent, and he's brought that on. For, for his size, his ball carrying is like incredible. He, he just puts that extra bit of pace, gets through the hole, um, and he's improved tremendously as a player. Um, but he typically was outstanding at the weekend. He was my man of the match at the weekend. Um, That's a good point, mate. See. Uh, no, what you say, I never even thought that. Sevens don't jump, do they? And there you've got another bloody good line-out. He's one of the best in the line-out as well. So you, you never jumped in your day, did you? Or did you even jump back then? Was it just one of the ones where you throw it in? Your did, I, did I jump? No. <laughs> um, i tell you what, I jumped in one line-out, and that was before we played Breathe in the cup final. And the, the sky cameras were there, and it was for a joke. And we turned up. And we were 20 minutes into that uh, European Cup final way back in 97. And we were 17 nil down within 20 minutes. And we lost that test. I never did it again. Uh, so, no. Um, I think if you can have five line-out options mm -hmm. in your line-out, it, it does help. But it's, it's, not, it's, it's not about that, really. I think he's got tremendous pace, great support lines. is an offloading player as well. Um, and I like him. But I like Curry as well. So the good thing is I don't have to pick the line side. I'd love to be in a position where I needed to, but that's down to Gats and his support team. As all selections are, it's down to that. It's what they want from their team. Yeah, I, was got, I, I wanted to pick up on that. Like, you, you know, if you're playing Australia um, or, or New Zealand, but th this tour is obviously South Africa, it's almost horses for courses. Is it's picking the best trio or your best trio to play South Africa. Like we can sit here and go, this guy has been amazing. This guy's performing here. It's a bit like the Sam Simmons debate. How does Gatlin want to play against South Africa? What is the, the recipe to beat South Africa? And for me, just looking at it, I would look at my six and my seven, um, just because I know these guys in an underhill and curry mold, kind of guys that are a bit, you know, really um, specialized at kind of low tackling and jackling. Because South Africa are kind of renowned for big ball carriers, really upright, um, 
you, you want guys that are going to hit low. I don't know Tipperick's game well enough to, to comment whether he is that guy. But, you know, I sort of want to state that I'm a massive fan of, of Tipperick. I gave him the bloody Azuzu unsung bloody hero the other week. So what I'm saying is it's up to Gatlin. It's horses, of course, is how are they going to beat South Africa and who fits into that framework? Because, like, d- does he want a big ball carrying number eight or does he want a dynamic number eight? You know, is Falatel going to be that guy? Is Vunapola going to be that guy? Or do you go, who's Scotland's number eight, Ryan? Matt Ferguson. Thank you. Um, or oh, CJ Standard, do you give him um, give him a run oh, there before he retires? Maybe maybe they'll do what Wales do, just pick really short players that will get their head contacted with the shoulder, pick up a red card, and then play against 40 men. That's yeah, a good exactly. tactic. They're going to win a great off the back of it. Dylan, I want to ask you about James Lowe. So he came in for a lot of criticism around his poor defensive effort, although he was extremely dangerous with the ball in hand. What did you make of his performance? I came in from a lot of criticism by ex-players with columns and stuff like that. Becky probably did one on me at one point. But if I was James Lowe, I just wouldn't care about the external noise. Like We're all sat here. We are the ones talking about his performance. I'm not, because I know. But... The only person, if I was James, though, I'd be bothered about is what Andy Farrell says to me. And I see what Andy Farrell said to him. And that's all part of learning as an international player. Like, he is amazing. I love watching him play. One, because he's got a massive smile on his face and he's got lovely hair is one of the other points. But he is a quality player. Like, you can't expect, and I think we all expect, people to be the finished article when they play international rugby they want to take that length to form and just go go do it on the international stage but like Becky said it's not the same game it takes time people need to learn and this is all just part of learning for James though he's a quality player he'll only be better for for these experiences and if Andy Farrell's um, building for the future they need to invest time and unfortunately experience is one of the best teachers and he'll only be better for it so James though, a big fan Another Kiwi plying his trade on the other side of the world. Wingers Dylan, hate I am so... Wingers just hate defence. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the crux didn't, of it. Didn't uh, Raj come out and said something about um, that's the very... Is that the super rugby way? They just, they, they're they allergic yeah. to defence. They're just all yeah. about attack. Someone who wasn't the voice of calm and reason on Sunday um, was actually Johnny Sexton. Although victorious, he wasn't particularly happy with the performance and the current standing of his squad, saying that they're currently falling short of being a top team. Dylan, do you think that this is potentially the worst Irish team you've seen in a while? Give me the reins again. Right. <laughs> so Johnny Sixton has to say that because he's communicating to his players. He's communicating to frustrated fans. The tournament hasn't gone. He's been around the block. He's got silver hair. Johnny's smart. You know what I mean? And he is in a role where he's talking to not only his team, he's talking to their families. He's talking to the public. He can't celebrate where, because their standards are so high. He can't celebrate where they are. So I think it's a really well-reasoned kind of message. Um, why would they be happy with where they are at? You know, he doesn't want to let his team know and, and the, the Irish rugby public know that they're happy with where their standing is in the pool. But um, yeah, if Johnny says anything else, he'll get hammered for that as well. Like you, you can't win. Being, being a person on the tally or whatever, you just can't win, can you? 